Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to our investments class. I am Bobby Gaines. So good to see you. Hey, Nick. Look, that looks like a college. Uh, that looks like a college. Uh, what do you call it behind you? That looks really, really good. I mean, you got the little thing up there. I can't see what it is. What's that behind you? Oh, a little pennant. A little pennant behind you. Yeah, it looks like a perfect little college room. What's uh, what's on your little whiteboard back there, Nick? What's going on? Uh, every assignment due for the next month. Oh my God, man! What's wrong with you? ADHD. Yeah, I got it too, man. I meet up with it. Y'all gonna find out I meet up with a lot of stuff. Oh my goodness. I got the ADHD. I got the PTSDs. I got the depression. I got the manic this and that. So it'll all come out. Trust me, it'll all come out. Isabel, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. What kind of plants you got behind you there? What is that? That's not, that's not the wacky weed, is it? That's just a regular house plant or something? Oh yeah, that's just my... Um my fake plants because i can't keep real ones alive okay i got you I've, I've i've always heard about college students smoking the wacky weed and i just make sure you wouldn't grow in wacky weed in the background there i mean it's legal here in alaska so oh really cool 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 <laughs> all right but you can't grow it or it'd be dead right right yeah okay all right uh juan how you doing pretty swelling yourself you know, fat and sassy, baby, fat and sassy. <laughs> hey, appreciate you guys being here. So this is going to be a great, 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 great class, okay? So uh, my name is Bobby Gaines again. Uh, this is the college class that I wish I had rather than all the stuffy and the boring and all the garbage that I had to go through in some classes where they taught theory and they would teach, uh, you know, the, from the textbook. And we don't even have a textbook in this class. So if you saw that a textbook per se from the university bookstore was required, it is not. I do have three books that you need to order for the class, but they'll be more of a, a fun and lighter read than some of the textbooks that you normally had. So we set it up so that it would be a, uh, a fun class for you. And if at the end of the course, I hope you will tell me that this was a stress-free course because I know you, I mean, look, Nick's got four or five assignments up there. I mean, the dude's already panicking, you know, over his course loads for sure this semester. So this course should not be that class. Matter of fact, all of you, uh, some who will be joining us live uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's great for those of you who are going to catch this later. All classes are going to be recorded. I will post them on YouTube. So you will have a link provided later today so you can go back and review any of the material that we went through as well. So this should be a very, very stress-free class. Even so, probably out of the class, I think we've got about, I don't know, 40 or 50 uh, that'll be taking the class. We'll probably have one or two else. We'll probably have three C's and probably, you know, 98% of you guys, I can't do the math in my head. 98% of you guys will have an A. So life happens. You get busy. You've got these other classes where these humongous projects are coming due. And in my class, I extend a lot of grace. So grace is extended unto you. I realize life happens. I realize that you have things going on in your life. Most of you, a lot of you are working jobs. You got family obligations. You got basketball games and you got all this kind of junk in your life. And I realize that this class should not be an impediment to uh, your daily life. So don't take it as such. So I hope everybody just take a big deep breath and relax because we're going to have a lot of fun together. All right. Any questions so far before we go through the syllabus? Bueller. Some of y'all are so young, y'all don't even get that reference, which is kind of sad. All right, so let's go through the syllabus really quick, like. And uh, so if you have not had the prerequisites, well, screw the prerequisites, right? I don't care. I don't even know what EC110 or what EC112 is or CSM and all this garbage is that you may have or may not have taken. So if, you, if, if there's somebody that you know that wants to take the course and they don't have the prerequisites, tell them that Bobby said, screw the prerequisites. Just send me an email and I'll get you into the course. All right. So a lot of you are headed for careers in financial planning. Nick, what's your plan, dude? What's, what are you doing? Uh, either financial planning or waiting to figure out law school. Wow. Look at you. Wow. Where would you go to law school? Alabama's got a good law school. Yes, sir. Alabama. Yeah, 
I've been sued by a lot of lawyers that graduated from Alabama. That's good. So uh, maybe I'll get you on my team before someone else hires you to go against me. How about that? Sounds like a plan. Isabel, what are you doing? What's your what's um, your deal? I'm currently working at the Matsu Borough here in Palmer, Alaska. Um, but I do want to get a career in financial planning. I've been in banking for probably about 14 years of my life, of my oh. adult life. Now, I didn't know that there were any females in Alaska. I've always heard there's only males up there. So you're like one out of every 20, right? I had to follow my husband up here. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. What's he do? He's a crew chief in the United States Air Force. Okay. Wow. Well, tell him thank you for his service. We appreciate that so much. I definitely will. Thank you. Yeah. Now, now I, I didn't understand what you said where you work, though. You're working in banking for 14 years. But what what where is it that you're at? Uh, currently, I'm just a part-time person at the Matsu Borough. Um, it's kind of, we call it a borough, but it's like a county. It's just really big. Okay. So I just um, take people's payments for like business licenses and their taxes and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I do work now, in the finance department. It's just not personal finance. <laughs> now, you said that you're just a part-time. Don't ever use the word just, Okay. Don't say okay. I'm just a part-time. You say, by God, I am a part-time whatever at whatever, and I do this, okay? So don't ever – it sounds like you're selling yourself short when you go, I'm just a something, right? So okay. you are. Now, I want you to ask – okay, Isabel, what what do you do again? I work at the Matthew Borough, and I'm a part-time worker. <laughs> you see how fast she ca catches on? I'm yes, watching sir. you. I'm watching you, Isabel. I got my eyes on you. you you're doing great. All right, Langston, since I can see you, I, I pick on the people who have their cameras on, but I really like y'all to have your cameras on. So if someone doesn't have a camera on, uh, put your camera on and I'll pick on you. So, uh, Juwan, what's, what's your story? Yeah, so I'm a career changer. Um, I work at TIAA, which, you know, services a lot of public universities, government institutions, nonprofit organizations, et cetera. Um, and I am a client in advisory relations analyst. Um, so I work helping manage retirement accounts and investments. Dude, I mean, that sounds like important and stuff. It's a lot I of mean, fun. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> hey, Juwan, you, you, I mean, you no, know, listen, my perception is that you're kind of a young dude though, man. I mean, that sounds like a, that sounds like a kind of cool gig for a guy uh, as, as young as you. Am I right? Or what? 26. So young is, perspective depends okay. on who you are <laughs> All right, well see i'm 27 so you and i are mm -hmm. about the same uh, uh mm -hmm. about the same age okay. <laughs> maybe i'm a little older than 26 all right so uh here we go so we don't have any required text right so oh, oh 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 this is a really good thing so let's see if you ladies and gentlemen cannot explain investments and the importance of investing to your best friend, your husband, your wife, your partner, your dog, your cat, or your mama, chances are you can explain the importance to your future clients. How many of y'all's got a mama? I'll, my mama passed away a couple years ago. God rest her soul. Let me tell you a story about my mama. So after my daddy died, it was I was tasked with keeping my mama alive, basically. And she was like 92, or three years old. And I remember I took her groceries every week and went to see her and she didn't have a television. And I was like, Hey, mama, would you like a television? She said, yeah. So I went to Walmart and I got her like a 34 inch TV or something, you know, and I was bringing her groceries over and my wife and kids were in the car and we, we pulled up to her house and paramedics were there. Ambulance, you know, the whole nine yards, police cars are there. And I'm like, Oh no, what happened to mama? And I got out of the car and went in and they said, I'm sorry, sir. Is this your grandmother? And I said, yes, it is. They said, we're, we're sorry to tell you that, that she's, she's passed on. She's passed away. And I said, Oh no, no, no. And I was like, man, I got her TV in the car. So I got back in the car and I looked at my wife. I said, let's go trade this 34 inch in for a 55 inch. Now, we went and traded my mom's TV in, and I still got the 55-inch TV to this day. So it was awesome. So I hated my mom died, but if you're going to die, you might as well trade her TV in and get a bigger one, right? So I did that with my mom's TV. God rest her soul. All right. So what was I telling y'all about? Isabel, what was I talking about before I? 
if you can't explain investments to your friends or mama, then you can't do it for your clients. Isabel, what is investments and what is the importance of investing to me? Pretend I'm your mama. Do I look like your mama? Yes or no? Uh, no, you don't. Okay, sorry. All right, go ahead. Um, so you take a little bit of your money and you put it in this other account and it grows overnight. Overnight, huh? And you need to do okay. that all the time. Okay. Okay. Just and just keep doing that, right? Just keep doing it every month. Now, why do you think? Why do you guys think that people in uh, the investing world? Why do you think investment advisors? Why do you think they? Well, first of all, do you agree with me that they complicate the simple? Would you agree with that? They complicate yeah. the simple. Nick, why do they complicate the simple? Well, they just can't explain it to people like they're five. So they but, know so much information. They just can't demonstrate it well. Give me what they need to know. But why, let me let me just ask you now. Let's 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 look at let's look at Juwan. Juwan he he whoops out this highfalutin job that he's got. Right, this is very impressive. Not to say that that Isabel's job is not high fluting too right but i'm just saying that what juan said i couldn't even tell you what juan does i mean he he made it sound you know like super super impressive but juan let me ask you a question now explain your job to me like you're talking to a five-year-old or to your mama which you know yeah. tell me your job again so i want you to tell me one more time what you do in simple terms yes so i am an individual um currently yes you are <laughs> Currently in a two-year program where I rotate into a new position every six months, and each rotation um, always has to do with helping clients manage and make decisions in regards to their retirement accounts, so their 401ks, their IRAs, um, as well as helping manage their investment accounts and making trades on their behalf. Okay. Now, see, I understand so much better what Juwan does now than what Juwan said to start with. Does anybody see the difference? Not saying that what Juwan did was bad. It's just that it sounded a lot more complicated than what he just told me. He says, you know what? I kind of rotate yeah. out of here and there and I, I kind of help clients with their investments. That's what Juwan does, right, Juwan? Yes, sir. Yeah. So Juwan now has all of a sudden simplified what he's doing in a way that I couldn't understand it. So if Juwan was going to be meeting with clients, I would rather him say, hey, man, you know what I do? I kind of flip out every couple you know, years. I stay here two years, and I'm helping people with their investments. That's, that's what I'd want Juwan to do. So to kind of simplify it for me, who has ADHD and all the PTSDs and all the things that I have, so it just kind of simplifies it a little bit. So I want y'all to be the same way, right? And when you're talking about investments, let's simplify the complicated, because it's not really complicated. But now let me ask you a question. Why would somebody in a field, when you're working with clients on their investments, why would I want to sound like I have an air of superiority? Not saying that Juwan did at all. He didn't. But why would I want people to think that I'm the stuff, that my butt don't stink? You know what I'm saying? You ever been around someone like that that they go, you know, man, I'm just, you know, they got the nose up in the air and well, let me tell you about the S&P 500 and blah, 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 and NASDAQ and marketable securities. Why would why would anyone ever have that persona when they're talking about investments? Because they don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to get more money out of you. Bingo! Isabel gets an extra point. Where's my pen? Where's my damn pen? Anyway, Isabel, send me an email. You can ask your point for that. That's exactly right. If Wasn't that I, Shannon? Huh? I think that was Shannon. Oh, was it Shannon? Thanks, Juan. Yes, yeah. it was. <laughs> how come I don't see Shannon? <laughs> hey, Shannon, I was giving Isabel. I, how come I don't see everybody? I want to see everybody. Shannon, are you got a video or are you just on audio? Is that what it was? It was audio, yes. Okay, listen, Shannon, then, I didn't say that. Shannon, you send me a, a email and tell me that you get an extra point, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, you Juwan. Thank you, Juwan, for doing Look at that, Juwan. I tried like, to help you, Isabel. I'm sorry. Juwan's <laughs> eating it up, man. He's like, look at me. I'm the stuff, you know. Juwan, you get an extra point, too. How about that? Send me an email. All right, so we got extra points thrown out here. 
Uh, grades are not going to be your problem in this class. Trust me. Right? I hated those classes. Uh, so, so we got this going on so far. So if I can, Shannon, if I can complicate what is simple, I can charge you more fees. Correct. Because I don't know any better. Because you don't know any better. Now, why do you not know any better? Now, I'm not saying Shannon doesn't know any better, but why does Joe Q Public not know any better? They don't research. They don't look at what they're doing before they get involved, and they rely on you to tell them since it's short. That's right, because they grew up through a public school system taught by teachers, and if they did have an economics class, they were taught by a teacher that really had no idea what investments or economics was all about at all. So even the people that teach the kids, they don't know what they're doing either. Have you ever had a college class where you thought, you know, I'm not sure this professor knows the material. You ever had those? You know, when you're going through there and you go, I'm not exactly sure. It's almost like they're reading from the book. Because they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on. I had a lot of investments classes, y'all, growing up in college. And, and and I went through the same master's program that you guys are going through here at the University of Alabama. I graduated in 2017. So I went through the same program. And, and my Alabama professors were great. But I, especially in undergraduate school, you had people teaching investments and finance that didn't know anything about investments and finance. When we got to the wonderful world of options and futures, we spent maybe 10 minutes on it, and they told me that it was something speculative, and they moved on to the next thing because they had never invested or traded options or futures. So I had to dig those type things out on my own. So if we can complicate the simple, you and I can make a lot more money. But I don't want you to be that person. I don't want you to be that person. When you're working, I don't want you to dumb things down, but at the same time, I want you to pretend that you are explaining this in a fun way to your grandmother. And if you can do that, you will be a success. And guess what? Will people still trust you and will people still come to you? Absolutely. But you're being open and you're being transparent, right? Your hands out here, you're saying, this is what it is. This is what we're doing with your money. And you make it simple. So you've got to simplify the complicated. So let us make that our first little thing, right? Oh, who wants to know what your first exam is? You ready for this? Who's got a pen? Now write this down or type it down. Ready? Here's your exam. First exam is this. Write this question down. What have you learned in this course so far? And how will you apply it to your life? Question one. That's exam one. Ta-da! So you're not going to be able to go to Course Hero, or you're not going to go over to Chegg or whatever, and you're not going to be able to get the answers to your exam. Now, some of you who are a little bit on the shady, la lazy side, I know that's none of you here, right? Shannon, it's not you, right? Got to involve Shannon. Right, not, not me, not me. It's not Shannon. Some of y'all are going to go to these new AI bots and y'all are going to say, type in cert certain keywords and have them try to, don't do that. That's garbage. You you're selling yourself short. I really and truly want to know what you have learned about investments, the course, and how you're going to use it in your life. It's so, so simple. Okay. Very simple. We keep things simple here. So first thing that you need to know is don't complicate that, which is simple. Don't complicate that, or is it that, what, which, what, 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 y'all know what I'm talking about, which is simple. Don't complicate the simple. And the reason that financial advisors complicate the simple is, well, <laughs> you heard of cattle are not smart enough. And so you need me and my uh, Mercedes Benz or my Lexus or my blah, 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 uh, to guide you poor people into this wonderful world of investments. Please tell me, promise me, raise your hand. 
and say, Bobby, I will never be that person. Shannon, is your hand raised? Yes or no? All the way up. Okay. Okay. I love Juwan's giving me the uh, the Vulcan <laughs> sign there. I like that, right? So nobody's crossing your fingers. I don't want you to complicate the simple. Don't complicate that which is simple. If you can keep things simple and explain clearly to your clients or to your parents or to your grandparents what you're doing, people will appreciate your transparency and they will appreciate you. Now, I've been watching the Madoff, Bernie Madoff uh, documentary. How many of you are familiar with old Bernie, Bernie, Bernie? Y'all are not familiar with Bernie Madoff? I well, watched the first episode and it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Who is that? Is that Shannon again? Who's that? Um, it's Isabella, not Isabella. <laughs> oh, we got Isabella and Isabel. How come I can't see everybody's talking? What is crap? What the crap is this? All right. So Isabella, you watched the first episode and, and you thought it was pretty interesting or not interesting? I thought it was interesting. I mean, it was kind of just like the beginning of what he was doing. It didn't really get into like everything he did, but I'm definitely going to finish watching the series. I encourage all of you. It's on Netflix. Just do a search for Madoff. And there's like a four or five episode um, documentary on Madoff. And here's what he did. He was getting his clients 1% a month and they were ecstatic because they never lost money. Now, some people wanted to know, Bernie, exactly what are you doing? And guess what he said? If you, if it's that important for you to know what I'm doing, it's probably best that I give you your money back. So what did they do? No, 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 Bernie. I appreciate the 1% that I'm getting a month. You keep my money. I don't care how you're doing it. And it was a Ponzi scheme. Isabella, not Isabel. Isabella, it was a Ponzi scheme. What's a Ponzi scheme, Isabella? Isn't it when um, he gets money from like certain investors and then he just transfers it to other investors? Yeah. So you give me money and I say that I'm going to make investments on your behalf and I don't make a single investment. Guess how many investments Madoff made for his clients? Zero. He just took their money and bought his cars and his mansions and his planes and his yachts and he paid his friends. And then... Isabella, if you come up to me and say, uh, Bobby, I want to withdraw $100,000, then I got to go, okay, thank goodness, Isabel just gave me $100,000. Whew, you know, problem solved. So now I've spent a lot of this money, but I'm going to take Isabel's money and I'm going to give it to Isabella. It's a Ponzi scheme. And when the 2008 financial crisis hit, oh man, it was, it was over. It was over. It came coming down. He could not satisfy the redemptions. He didn't have enough, and everybody wanted their money, and he didn't have it. And it was the largest Ponzi scheme ever in the history of probably the world. It's amazing. All right, so don't complicate the simple. Put that on your exam. When you say, what do I learn? Don't complicate the simple. Don't complicate that, which is already simple. Let's don't do that. All right. Let's go to Nick. Nick, you want to go pick pick where we're going next? I got two little pictures here. Which one you want? Uh, let's go with the houses. Yeah. Okay. Those are not houses, Nick. Those are schools. Now, now, tell me again what you want to go to. Uh, the schools. Oh, Nick, I'm glad that you figured out those were schools. Yeah, my artwork is impeccable, isn't it? I call it abstract. It's abstract Bobby artwork. So, two schools of thought. There are two ways that I can teach this class. You ready? I can teach you to pass an exam for the CFP, or I can teach you about really how to make money. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion to you. My suggestion is you allow me the freedom to teach you how to invest and make money for you and your clients rather than how to pass a, an exam. That's my suggestion. So my suggestion is, let me teach you the nuts and bolts of how to make money for you and your clients. And then 
we'll cover a little bit about the exam and make sure that I give you some things there. Because when you sit for your CFP exam, if any of you ever do it, how are you going to prepare for that exam? Study. Are you going to study? What else might you do, Isabel? Panic a lot. Okay, you might <laughs> panic a lot. You might throw up on the floor, right? You might, I mean, there are all yeah. kinds of things you might do, right? Uh, is it possible that any of you are probably going to sign up for a, a cram course or review course before you do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's let them pump you full of the stuff that you're going to need for the exam. If you will allow me the freedom, and then uh, at the end of the semester, you will allow me the freedom to teach you the principles of wealth accumulation without the nitty gritty of passing exam, you'll get all of that from your little cram course. Is everybody in favor of that? Yes. Any objections to me taking that approach? I don't want you to get out of here and go, oh my God, I don't know how to pass that exam. Well, take a, take a, take a darn uh, uh, remedial course, you know, the, the, the cram course. There's tons of them. People that will tell you, when in doubt, check B or, you know, this, this, and this. And they'll give you all those little forms. That, let's don't make this class that. Let's let's don't complicate the simple. Investments are simple. Let's let's keep it nice and easy, okay? So everybody's on the same page. I don't want to leave anybody disappointed. All right. Now, Juwan, which picture do you want to go to? There's only one left. I'm in a pretty good mood today, so I think we should go with the smiley face because money equals happiness for some people, but not everyone. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you my little quote here. Ready? Money can't buy happiness, but the lack of it can, now if y'all can understand my dialect here, can show make you miserable. All right. That'd be a good thing for you to put on your exam too, right? Money can't buy happiness, but the lack of it can show make you miserable. And Lord knows that I know this in my lifetime. Y'all, there were times if I hadn't parked the old minivan behind the house that the Mr. Repopo man might have picked it up before the morning sun came up. You ever been in that situation? Maybe not. So money can't buy happiness, right? So we don't say, oh, we get money to equate us with the happiness that we have in our life. But the lack of money can show make you miserable. Think about times that you've seen in your parents' lives, in your friends' lives, or in your lives where you struggle with money. It's just a struggle to make the next payment, to buy the next grocery, to do whatever. Those kinds of situations can show make us miserable and we don't want to be there that is not the place that we want to be so don't complicate the simple money can't buy happiness but the lack of it can show make you miserable anybody that agrees with that statement have you ever seen somebody without money that's miserable i was so poor in college y'all let me tell you what my alarm clock was. Now, I'm sure most of y'all have alarm clocks when you wake up for classes in the morning. You know what my alarm clock was when I was in their graduate school? 32 ounces of water before I went to bed. Yeah. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. If you drink 32 ounces of water before you go to bed, you'll be up by your 7.30 in the morning class, trust me, because you got to pee or you pee a lot of yourself. Right. So that's how poor I was in college. I didn't have an alarm clock. So money can't buy happiness, but the lack of it can show make you miserable. Questions or comments about that? I like I like your interaction. Can you give me an example of maybe some uh, something in your life or a friend's life when they were going through something that they were a little miserable because they didn't have money? Anybody going to be open and transparent enough to share something? I can. Yeah, Isabel. I had to work three jobs when I was about 18, because we were very new to the military. We had a five-year-old daughter and, um, and 
she was going to kindergarten. We had one truck and our car payment was way more than what we could afford. And the interest rate was way up there. Um, so I had no time to myself going to school full time, trying to work three jobs um, and make a life for myself. But we made it through it. Look at you. <clears throat> now, why did you do it, though? Why did you do it? You, you probably could have said, oh, man, you know, I'm not going to do it, blah, blah, blah. But why did you do that? If we didn't, we'd be on the streets. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like, you know, the lack of money is the necessity of of doing the things that you got to do to bring it in, right? So that that's incredibly, uh, and that's incredibly brave of you to say that. So I appreciate you sharing that story with us. That's really, really cool. And so that tells us a lot about Isabel, right? Isabel has work ethic, right? She is the type of person that at her job, she shows up, right? I bet she doesn't call in late. I bet she doesn't come in late. I mean, she's a responsible human being because she takes care of business. That's awesome. Anyone else got a story they want to share? Yeah, I can share. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I'm a career changer. Um, I spent six years dancing ballet professionally. And if you know anything about the arts in America is you know that they are not very well funded. And so meaning you don't make as much money as you should. Um, so I was also kind of in the same boat as Isabel. I worked three jobs to not only pay off any student loans, um, but also all of that I had. And sometimes that included having $30 available for groceries. And that $30, I would take right to the dollar store and see what I can get for $30. And you would be surprised how far rice and beans and canned ravioli can take you. That is wonderful. I love that. And I love that you love the arts, too. I love the arts. What you're going to find with me is we're going to spend a lot of time watching films. We're going to watch videos. We're going to watch documentaries. We're going to listen to music just about every class. I always put music on before. All of you had to come up with a theme song, right? So that's your first assignment is a theme song. You need a theme song. And we'll talk more about your theme songs. But we won't do it this day. I want everyone to get their theme songs in. But we're going to share some of your theme songs and what it means to you. So I respect you that you love the arts, that you're a dancer. But at the same time, you knew that, hey, this ain't paying the bills. So Juwan's like, you know, got to get some things on the side. Now, Juwan, wouldn't it be great to be at a point in your life that you can pursue those things and not have to worry about your investments and the the future money and your, you know, your future? Wouldn't that be cool? You mean not dancing in America? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, you know, that you can do the things that you love, spend time with the ones that you love and, and to do those things. So that's excellent right because a lot of people say it's foolish advice to tell people that they can do what they love and do what they want to do because you can't do it because you're worried about money i wanted to be a music director i wanted to be a band director in high school right and that's what i wanted to do and i got to college and i started my band director told me this story y'all he said bobby i didn't tell y'all this when you were in school but my high school band director said listen if we had not had a pond behind our house, he said there would have been days that my family and kids would not have had dinner because I, if I hadn't caught a fish, a catfish. And I thought, oh, my God, I had no idea. So guess what I did? Hell, I changed my major. I didn't want to have to worry about catching catfish, so I'd have food for my family. So I changed it to business. But isn't it sad that we do live in an environment, in a society where uh, oftentimes we can't pursue those things which are our interests because we are worried about money. Does that, can you relate to that? Any of you? Juan, you can relate to that, I'm sure. All right. All right. So back to the syllabus. Let's get back there. So we finished all my little drawings here. So you're going to get three little books Simple Path to Wealth, Your Road to Financial Independence and a Rich Free Life. Uh, let's let this one, if money is a concern, you can get this one first, okay? The second book that you're going to get is the Little Book of Common Sense Investing, the only way to guarantee your fair share of stock market returns. Little Book's Big Profits by John Bogle. 
And I got cheap books too, right? You know, when you buy a textbook, how those authors, you know, you have to pay $200 for a stupid textbook and then you sell it back for 15. No, I'm in this class. We're going to get some of these little cheap books here. So it's on Amazon. It's on Kimble and, and Kindle. And then the Wealthy Barber. So get this one first, Simple Path to Wealth, then this one. So we'll finish this one first, then the Little Book of Common Sense, and then the Wealthy Barber. And these are all kind of fun books. They're not really deep. They're easy reads. You can actually finish them in a weekend if you had to. And we'll talk about them. Okay? Questions on your books? Bye, Beth. Y'all say bye to Beth. That's my wife. Bye, hon. You be good, girl. She's going to get my wild children. And they'll be back in a minute, and then they'll start screaming, and then y'all be like, oh, my God, how is he un so unprofessional? Hey, baby, that's just my life. Our kids are here, and I'm in my house, and I'm sitting in my underwear even as I'm speaking to y'all. So it just is what it is. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the – all right, here's where I'm going to get real proper. Investments in the framework of this course will be uh, addressed through the perspective of a comprehensive financial planning program. And this is the stuff that I am required to teach you guys – by the CFP people. And we'll talk about these. We're going to talk about the time value of money, concepts and calculations from their learning objectives B12. You can look these up. Character uses, uses and taxation of investment vehicles, types of investment risk, market cycles, quantitative investment concept, measures of investment returns, asset allocation and portfolio diversification, bond and stock valuation concepts, portfolio development and analysis, investment strategies and alternative investments and liquidity risk. Questions on that? Yuck. That just sounds nasty just going through the list, doesn't it? All right. So we have three different things that you have. We have two exams. Sometimes, if y'all are really sweet and participate good, we just waive the last exam. Sometimes I'll just say, okay, uh, put your name on a piece of paper and I'll give you a hundred, right? To help your thing. So it depends on how sweet y'all are through the course, how kind you are. We may, the second exam may just be much ado about nothing because what happens at the end of the semester? Y'all start getting worried because you have what? Dinos. Dinos. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And then y'all get all freaked out. Then your blood pressure goes up. Next thing you know, you're dropping dead in the in the emergency room. So I don't need that. So let's don't complicate your life. And I love giving extra credits. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So are y'all after going through this so far, are you a little bit relieved or are you still nervous? I want you to be relieved. I want you to go, oh Bobby, it's gonna be just fine. Everybody good? Okay, good. All right, so then you know how to make your A's. Everybody should make an A, even though I'll give an L because someone will take advantage of the grace that I get. If you miss something, blah, blah, blah. Look, if you can't have something by the uh, due date, what should you do, Juwan? What should you do? There's a little thing called communication. Communication. And reach out to Mr. Bobby Gaines. You reach out to Bobby and say, Bobby, oh, Bobby, oh, Bobby. You know, life is happening. I'm behind. And, and grace will be given. Now, there is a day upon which all grace must end. And that is at the end of the semester when everything must be submitted. Okay. So if you need a little grace on something, it's not a big deal. But please do yourself a favor and watch the videos and watch the movies that we'll watch together and listen to the songs and participate. You'll have much more fun, I trust. And, and you'll get more out of this. Okay. It's amazing how the normal distribution curve applies to many areas of life. How many of y'all know what a uh, normal distribution curve is? How about Isabella? Isabella, do you know what a normal distribution curve is? Uh, yes, sir. Talk to me about it. Throw it out. Um, it? It's basically a bell curve, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And and... It kind of... All right, go ahead. A bell curve. Yeah. And I can't remember the specific percentage, but a specific percentage is underneath the, like the, yeah, 68%. And then it's like under the, there's like three segments and then it's, I'm not sure the percentage is to be completely honest. So, yeah, uh, this is kind of the normal distribution of, 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 we could do weights of people. We could do grades. We could do portfolio managers. You can basically take a bell curve and, and throw in here, but with them one standard deviation up or down of the mean or the middle, right? 68% of all occurrences are going to be in here. 68% of students are pretty much average. 
Then on either side, 68 from 100 is what, y'all? Someone help me do the math. 32. 32. So 16% will fall down below the average, and 16% will kind of fall above the average. Right? Now, if I were to ask you, let me just ask you, Isabel, where are you? I'm right here. I'm right in the middle. I'm average. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I thought she said it right here. I thought, you know, thousands of comedians out of work and Isabel trying to be funny. Unbelievable. <laughs> Nick, where are you? On the right. For real? Or you just you just yanking my chain? Uh, I missed the question. I was reading. I got look at his board. board. He is definitely on the right. Hell, he's. Hey, did I, I give him his extra point? Take his extra point away. Unbelievable. I was reading your biography here about okay. your trips to Atlanta. Okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah. All right. So, so, are you average or are you above average? Or are you oh, above average. average? You're you're average. Above average. You're above average. Okay, Juan, where are you? I'm exceptional. There you go. I love it. See? <laughs> Come in here with some moxie, baby. I love it. All right. So Isabel's been participating. Or, or Isabella's been participating. Isabella, where are you, girl? I'm right here. Dang. <laughs> oh, sorry. I am. I think I'm to the right. I'm gonna take I think if I do all my work, I'll be to the right. Hold on a minute. Let me staple my finger. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Son of a it's going to leave a mark. Jeez. All right, where did you say you think you're where? I think if I do all my work and participate, I'll be to the right. Yeah, you should be to the right. Okay, uh, who else is in the class that hadn't participated that love to participate? Anybody else? I don't want to leave anyone out. I want everybody to play along. I was just people that's participating I'm listening to. Anyone else? Okay, yeah. So 68% <laughs> of people, oh, there's Katie. Katie, how you doing? Katie, where are you? I'm right here. Don't do it. Hi. Katie's like, I'm in Coleman, hey, Alabama. You? I'm in Coleman in my car eating lunch. Um, hey, far right, top what, two. That's the goal. Hey, what are what are you eating for lunch, by the way? Let's see it. Chick fil A kids meal. Okay. Oh man. Oh, that's cool. Grilled or fried? Yeah. Grilled. Oh, look at you. A health nut like me. I'm trying. Good. All right, Katie, where are you at? I'm other than being I'm aiming, in Alabama. Aiming for the top. Like aiming for the top. Four to five percent. That's the goal. And do, do you think you're going to be in the top four to five percent when it comes to being a financial advisor or planner? What's your what's your plan in life? What's what's your deal? I am a financial advisor. Oh, awesome. So where are yeah. you right now in your career as far as uh, as financial advisors? Do you think you're in the you're exceptional, you average, you below average? With those who started post-COVID, I think I'm above average. Okay, I like it. I like that. I like yeah. that. Because there's three things, right? There's who who there's who there's we think we are. There's, right. there's who others think we are. And then there's finally who we are, right? So we kind of have to reconcile right. those three things. But, but it starts with having a vision of where you want to be so that you will be there. So that's good. That's awesome. Awesome. All right, good deal. Anyone else want to participate? Tell me where you're at on the bell curve. All right. Let's finish with our little thing here. All right. Here's where uh, a good student will be. Students I have found have six amazing attributes. All right. They possess a grateful spirit. Nick, what's a grateful spirit? Just one of thankfulness. Uh, I guess humility. Understanding that you have some amount of privilege to be where you are. Amazing, right? That's good. Grateful spirit. How many of you possess a grateful spirit? You know, you wake up in the morning and rather than going, I can't believe what I don't have, you go, wow, am I really thankful for what I do have? It's a great thing to have, y'all. When you have gratitude as an attitude, it changes everything. Gratitude is an attitude rather than just being, you know, oh, why don't I have what? that person has or if i were only this person you wake up in the morning you say man am i grateful 
right? So if you want to be a successful student in my class, have a little gratitude. They are kind, kind. In a world where you can be anything, be what? Kind. Kind, yeah. They have a thirst for knowledge and wisdom. So let's don't just say, since I told you it's an easy A class, let's just don't take our easy A. Let's get, let's, let's dig in here and let's get some knowledge and wisdom. Okay. And you can get some knowledge and wisdom from an old guy that's in here. That's made all the mistakes that some of you may have already made some of them, but hopefully I can keep you from making those mistakes. They're present during class sessions, right? So even if you can't be here live every time, that's fine, you know, but be present when you're watching the recording. They participate in class activities and discussions as you guys, Isabel and Nick and Juwan and Katie and Isabella have all participated. That's really good. And they have a positive attitude. I mean, have a positive attitude. It changes everything, y'all. Gratitude, attitude, gratitude, attitude. I started with gratitude. I end with attitude. If you'll have those things, it's really good. Now, uh, you probably had some horrible professors along the way. You've had some good professors along the way. Of course, all Alabama professors are wonderful. Uh, but in your academics, you probably, whether high school, elementary school, you've had a few duds along the way, people with chips on your shoulders. And what you need to know about me is I am your biggest partner in education in this class. I, you will be eternally attached to me at the hip. I love hearing from my students. Send me a friend request on Facebook. Uh, keep up with me. I'll keep up with you. You know, if you need a letter to somebody telling them how great you are because you need a job, then, you know, be memorable in my class. So I won't have to lie, right? And participate, be good. And uh, and I'll, I'm your partner in education. So you can call me. You got my phone number. You can text me. You can send me a message. Bobby, what if it's three in the morning? You can send it. I probably ain't going to hear it because I'm hooked up to my CPAP machine and my wife has a fan the size of a uh, airplane propeller beside our bed. <laughs> so you're not going to wake me up. So you send me a message. You send me an email. I'll get back to you. Okay. I'm your, you've got to understand this. I'm your biggest cheerleader. Whereas you may have had professors in the past who look to impose their, it's going to be this way on you. That is certainly not me. I'm your big cheerleader. I want you to be successful in this course. I want you to be successful in your family. I want you to be successful in your life. And finally, I want you to be successful in your career. So successful professors, this is the, these are the attributes that I wish my professors would have had. They freely admit that I that they don't know everything. Y'all, can I raise my hand and say, you know a lot of stuff and I don't know? Probably even about investments. Katie, she's already in there and Juan's in there. Yeah, you know things that I don't know. I do not know everything. I don't want to know everything. I know just enough to be dangerous, right? And if you ask me something and I don't know, I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt either and tell you that, oh, I know that, I'll get back to it. I'll say, hey, man, I don't know. I'll get to you. I'll, I'll try to look it up, see if I can find an answer, okay? So I don't know everything. They're approachable. you never find anyone more approachable than me. Call me, text me, send me a message, whatever. They listen to the needs of your students, right? So I've had someone today saying, hey, I got family in the hospital. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be tough for me. I understand. I understand. And I, it, much grace is given. When grace is requested, I give much grace. They encourage their students. I'm not here to discourage you. I'm here to encourage you. I want you to be a success. They treat their students with respect. I respect you. Uh, I make a lot of jokes. I I will not do anything that will be disrespectful to you. Like I made fun of Isabel saying I was here. Well, she knows I'm joking, right? So I joke a lot. If I do something that uh, is not respectful to you, I apologize. Uh, Again, I, I meet up with ADHD, PTSD, anxiety, depression. I've got all that stuff. So it's just part of it. I'm on every medication on the man. Those of you that are on Adderall, I drink it like, I mean, I take it like it's, you know, like it's candy. I got effects, sir. I got some mood stabilizer. I'm on everything. So don't worry about it. I, I'm there too. So they make learning enjoyable. I, again, y'all enjoy the class and they become a lifelong resource to their students. Now, you need to read my... Uh, biography when it comes to investments you know i had a mama that worked her butt off in factory my daddy was catting around with all kind of women and running around and spending the money and my mama in order to keep us going 
she would work a second job after she'd come home with grease on her hands. She'd wash her hands, and then she would uh, uh, work as a waitress that night. And had she not brought home food from the restaurant, there were a lot of times we wouldn't have had food. So you got to just just keep in mind where I kind of went from, tells you about my life, my family, which is everything. Uh, and then we get into all the, the the boilerplate stuff. All right, any question at all on the syllabus? Any any questions? Any comments at all? I do have a quick question. Hey, Juan. Um, so I noticed that, and it might be slightly different. So in the grades, there are you know dates of assignments and things that are available. Um, is there any document that we would be able to have access to to kind of put? you know, dates and align things for our own personal planning as far as like assignment due dates, exam due dates, et cetera? Yeah, you know, I mean, I could, I, I, I would just say this, I kind of don't want you working ahead though, right? Okay. And you're kind of not going to have anything that's like really, it's not going to be really big. I mean, it's not, I don't want to say it's not really big, but if watching a documentary or watching a video and giving me a, just a little one pager on it, I mean, you're not going to have a term paper. You're not going to have, you know, essays, really big essays. It's just going to be kind of some common sense things that you should be able to accomplish spending an hour or two a week reading something or reading your assignments and then answering what you found out about the information that you read or was. So does that kind of get you? And some people don't like that structure a lot. And Juan, if you don't like that structure, I'm going to give you access to all the stuff and I'm going to let you do the due dates and everybody for everybody so you can uh, send it out there. <laughs> Turn that over to you. Hey, why not? I got I got free time. Hey, we may do that. Baby. <laughs> hey, I, I, may, I may be texting you say, hey, you're the assistant for the course. You're going to tell everybody when everybody this is up. But it'll be like, you know, uh, like I, I normally – your assign I will say this, your weekly reading and assignment is due by when? 11.59 on Sunday night. It's always going to be 11.59 Central Time on Sunday night. So if you watch a video or something, I will open that back up on Sunday. So you'll have from Sunday to Sunday to accomplish anything. I can't think of a single thing that we're going to do in this course that you're going to need like five weeks to complete. Okay, it's kind of going to be a little module for the week. You do the little module, you go to the next little module, you go to the next little module. Okay, and we'll be listening to songs, we're going to be dancing, we're going to be watching movies and documentaries, things of that nature. See, that's Is that okay? So I'm not going to yeah. give you anything that's going to go, oh gosh, you've got to work 18 weeks on to have it completed at the end of the class. No, I wouldn't do that to you, Juwan. I love you too much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other okay. any other comments or questions whatsoever? Has everybody got their theme song? I think I've got one in mind. Okay, good. Get your theme song. And <laughs> we'll be sharing your theme songs together. So that's kind of cool, right? Uh, the other thing that you need to do is download the Thinkorswim platform because we're going to get in there and do some cool things. Is that, what the hell is that? Oh, that's a dog. How about that? What is that, like a chihuahua or something? He's a miniature pincher with ears. Oh, cool. That's really cool. What's, what's his name? His name is Saki. Saki like, or Saki? Saki, like the drink, the Japanese oh, wine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Saki. Okay, cool. Very cool. All right. Um, yeah. So what was I saying, Isabel, before you interrupted me with Saki? That was a little bit rude of you, Isabel, yeah. to interrupt Sorry. me with Saki. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, I'm just joking. Uh. I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, yeah, I won't give you anything that's going to, you know, take you a whole semester to accomplish. This is going to be a stress-free class. Just do your little modules, do your little reading, and then let's just come and talk about it. Okay? You're going to learn a lot, though. You're going to learn a lot. Any other questions at all? No, sir. All right. If not, I will open the new module up for you on Sunday. You'll be ready to go. Complete this module by Sunday. There's no reading. There's just downloading the Thinkorswim platform and giving me your theme song. All right. With that, I will see y'all next Tuesday.